Well, I said I'm going to boot it up and I'm going to see what I can do with it, even without a GPU. So let's begin. Here's a new byte from your studio house test. And I'm going to install Proxmos on this old Office PC and play around a little bit with it. I always wanted to play around with Proxmos to see what I can do. And it is also possible to install a Windows 10 VM on it. So uh, I don't know how this will all work out, but uh, definitely at least seeing if the PC even boots. So let's turn on the power, which it already is, and start the launch button. All right, so this PC in on itself is not that exciting, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, it doesn't even have LEDs in it, so I'm kind of glad about that. But I really want to make sure that it's actually working. So let's put it on. There it goes. Just need to hope for something. Okay. We have an image and it already boots into the Proxmox installation. Well, let's install Proxmox. So what this is, is a virtualization host. And basically you can, inside of Proxmox, host a bunch of different software. And since we have a four core CPU, I was rather thinking, okay, let's see what we can do with it. I have 500 gigabytes of SSD in here, which of course is very quiet and nice. And as soon as I can, I'll also go into the motherboard BIOS and maybe tune down the cooler a little bit. Because right now, this is the lo like loudest part of it, at least. Not the largest, the loudest. And if the GPU works next week when the power supply comes around, I'd much rather hope that it won't be as loud anymore. I need a mouse. Basically, the installation is super easy. You just have the license agreement that you agree on. You select the hard disk that you want to go on. I have nothing else in here, so this is the only one. And we just click Next. So everything looks good. I'm going to hit Install. And just wait until everything is set up. And afterwards, we can actually close this whole thing down because this is then fully set up server. I just need to have it turned on and connected to the network. And I can actually go over to my main PC and start doing things over there. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Hey folks, Editing House is here. Uh, just one quick side note actually. In order to use Proxmox, you need to have two drives actually. One that's occupied by the service system and the second one is actually that you want to use to install VMs on. So between this last cut and the one that you're about to see, I actually cleaned a two terabyte HDD from my main PC and put that into the server in order so I can use it. And I guess my 500 gigabyte SSD is a little bit too much actually. So uh, just learning as we go and uh, see how it evolves. And I'm happy to continue this video now. This video won't deal with how to set up Proxmox and how to install your VM. Um, there's two good videos that I want to recommend to you. And um, what I want to show you is a cool application of this home server thing that I have right here. Because I was thinking, okay, why not use it as a Minecraft server? You know, that's a basic application. The system should be able to run it. And then I can play from here or from any other device in my home. I can invite friends over. They just install the Java version and we can all just play together on this nice server. So let's do that. Let's jump in with Proxmox. So what we have here is the login field. I just used the one that I... So how does Proxmox work? Basically, you install this on a machine and this can't even work on a home PC like this one. And this is basically the OS and the OS provides already this web interface. It opens up a data center and inside the data center are nodes. Nodes being the actual physical machines that we have. So this PVE here is the one that I installed. And as you can see, it has in the search already different types of storage and these monitor icons next to it. In the description, you can see these are actually virtual machines. So what we want to do next is actually go over and uh, upload the ISO that we have. So we go to local here, just already provided, go to content. There's a few ISO uh, files already on here. What we want to do is actually we want to upload this ISO image. And what we want to use is actually the MinOS node stretch. Just upload that, hit upload. And this is actually real time, so it's not accelerated. This is how fast data distribution works between my system and the server that I have running here. Since it's using an SSD, you kind of use, use the full speed of the SSD. And from my PC, it's reading from an HDD, which is of course fast enough. We see here now, okay, MineOS is here. We have it uploaded to the server. And now what we need to do is actually go back to PVE and create a VM. It's very simple. This will run on the machine PVE. This should work already out of the box then. Click on finish. 
and then it's getting set up. Creating as a question mark here because status is unknown. It says here create status OK. And then we have our new VM here on the left. So this is all running on this old home office PC. And uh, what we just need to do is actually hit start. So it boots up and then go to console. And this window then shows us, hey, this is what we would see if we would actually run a PC with only this system. So what we do of course is install hard disk and then it just rushes through. All right, and now we should be able to use this uh, server. And as I see here, just go to 192.168.178.95 and the port of 8443. If we want to put data on it, we just use this address through file server, for example. And yeah, let's just go over and actually open it up. We do that, it says, oh, this is a risk. And that's okay, because it's a self-signed SSR protocol. We just go here and say, yes, we accept that because we trust our own machine, it should be safe. And then welcome to MinOS. So what we did here is use the MC user. There we go. And there we are. This is MinOS running inside of Proxmox on the actual PC that we had here that I showed you in the last video. All right, so looking up quickly, of course, what I need to do is uh, I forgot to download actually profile. I was thinking it was done beforehand, not the case. So what we would do is we go in I'm currently downloading just the latest version just for demo purposes. You can download any version of the server software that you want. You can even upload your own uh, pre-configured or uh, custom service if you want. We're going to take the 1.15.1 version. I'm going to download that. It's downloaded. Just create a new server, give it a name and just hit create a new server. And then if you go over to the server page again, as I said before, select the profile select the jar file and then hit start. Maybe you have to accept the EU LA. I did that now. First time, apparently I didn't. And uh, so in order to see in Minecraft that this actually is a server that's available on my network because everything's connected to my router that I have, I have to go to Broker Sulan. And if I refresh here, oh, it just showed up in a second. Hang on, go out, multiplayer. Should be able to find it. Uh, there we go. So join server, connecting to server and should be working now because they actually found I didn't need to put in anything. It just broke us to the line, which is cool. For example, if you host a LAN party and you have like a small system, there we go, join the word. Uh, you can just bring this one PC connected. You just put the PC on the network and it automatically broadcasts to the LAN. Uh, which address it is, so you don't need to look it up. So that's the coolest feature of all. And yeah, I'm actually playing right now on my own Minecraft server on this home office PC. And gotta say, quite good actually. I've played Minecraft in a long while. And I know this is just vanilla, we can put on mods and everything, but just to show that it's actually working, you know, see, uh, right now here, place online one. I can go into the lock, see, okay, someone connected. This is me, house test, the uh, user. Has the IP of 24, so my PC is 24, and coming over the port 59958. So um, that's all the things that we have here. I could now go in and small messages, for example, right now. And for example, if I want to broadcast to my LAN party, hey, I'm closing on the server, I can just say, say, the server now, broadcast that, go to my game and see here, oh, the server says server, close down the server. Oh no! And once I hit, for example, in the admin page that it needs to stop, you can see already up there, Minecraft server closed, back to service, and it will still show up, but uh, we can't access it anymore. So join service says uh, connection timeout and we'll be done. So yeah, that's how to set up within Proxmox, super simple, a Minecraft server. Hope you liked it. Uh, we can actually close this down now as well. You can go here, shut down, reboot, can reboot the server itself so it's really cool how far like homemade servers have come actually and i'm really uh happy how it all works out so this is one of the use cases for which you can use an old office pc make it your own you know fix it up a little bit and then uh, use it for example like a minecraft server in your own home and the cool thing about this is you don't need to run it on your own PC. Additionally to the game, you have two different really computers. You can access this even from another computer from a laptop. Uh, if you have a friend over and say, hey, how about we play Minecraft? 
here's my laptop, I go on my PC and we all play over this one server that's already pre-configured. So I personally think this is really great and I hope uh, you got something to learn from that as well. <laughs> my name is Hostess, thanks so much for watching. And I think I'm going to play more Minecraft now because uh, why not? Just going to use that um, whole thing. Oh yeah, one last thing. If you try to connect to these uh, IPs and things that I mentioned here, you can't access that. That is only on my local network. They are not available from outside of the internet. So don't bother with it. All right, now, see you soon. Bye-bye.